excellent video, but I'm going to show you guys that I would have to show you another free demonstration for those of you who have been watching this. So, I was at Goodwill earlier today. I just picked up this nice, nifty item. As you can see here, this is something I am going to show you to you today. Here's the next story. Last year, um, I got my Kodak carousel, and it had a couple of problems because the solenoid was broken. And, and uh, so when I ordered off of Amazon, I got another one. I replaced it with a new solenoid, and then nothing. It kind of a problem. It kind of jammed up, and it's not working properly. But overall, it's not working that much anymore. So I got rid of that carousel because it's garbage. I throw it out, well, because with except one of the remaining pieces of the carousel projector, which I, which I just told you. Yeah, it was a huge failure. So, about, about a year later, I just bought this about after about probably like 12 months to a year, I just recently picked up this one at Goodwill and I found it. And this is another slide projector. And as you can see here, this is not even made by Kodak, but I, I'd like to show you in just a minute here, but just a moment. You can see you're looking at is a an Argus 500. This is a, an excellent projector. And I got this at Goodwill. I paid 20 bucks for it. It looks, it's in very good shape. Except, um, just to focus for a little bit. It works pretty good. Actually, I tried to test it out. And yeah, I'm just give you a little bit of focus here. So here's the, here's the actual side of this unit. As you can see, the case is a bit dirty. Except it's got some damage right there. You can see I taped it right over there when after I got it and you can see it's started to rip to part. Yep, it's got that beat up case. See it's already been beat up. See there's a little dirt on there. The side, the back, and here's the side. Here's the front. It shows the Argus 500 logo. And it's got that cooling fan. I did some cleaning inside when I after I first got this thing. Yep, yeah, it it was a little bit dirty. So, and yep, you can see the bottom edge of this. In here's your screws to take it apart. See what how you can repair them. So, anyways, and all you gotta do before we start to go any further than this. Okay, where's the Alright, so if this is my video, folks, um, anyways, all you gotta do, you have two latches, this, and you can see here's the handle right there, and here's what you can do, all you gotta do is open the handle like this, and what you get? A slide projector. Wow, how about that for a nice item? This is a cool looking projector. I believe this unit is from probably like the late 50s, early 60s, whatsoever. And Argus made a lot of great slide projectors. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's kind of like a successor to Kodak or or Bell and Howell. You can see here's the here's here's the actual unit. See it has you can see right there on the edge it says Argus automatic slide changer made in USA and it's got that little handle so you can change the next slide. And and you can see it it has a, it has a it has a a power switch you can turn off or on. And you see there's a back that says Argus 500. And yep, there's the off on switch. And it says Argus Cameras, Ann Harbor, Michigan, a division of Sylvania Electric Products. And this was as Model V. And 
I don't know if there's actually a lettering in the model, but not a model number. It's, it's just a letter in the model. And um, and here's your lens. Yep, it's where you can focus. And here's the uh, the emblem right there. It says Argus 500. And there's your the top here is where you can replace your lamp once it blows. Yep, it still has the original lamp in there. Sorry folks, I finally ran out of video, so I just uh, can't like delete it. Uh, I don't know, I apologize for the thing because it's too much storage on my phone. I'm sorry for about that. So let's continue on. And it's got that lamp right there. It's, it's, it uses a CZA lamp. But uh, on the other side, it uses um, DAK. Yeah, it uses any any type of lamp you want. It's only about depends on the lamp. And here's your grill that came from there. It's got those little bit of other things. So um, and it still has the original power cord. Yeah, it looks pretty good for its age, for being 60 years old. But this is a very nice projector. All you got to do is you should, first you got to plug this in the unit. And, uh, and just before we do, here's what you can do is take this thing out. There you can see it's unveiling. You can see the, the little door. That's where you can close and that's how you can a little bit of replacing this projector. All you gotta do is take, se take it out separately in order to clean. But, so, let's plug this in and uh, see what it does. First, you got to use the film slide for, um, yeah, I have, yeah, I have two extra slides that came with this unit. So all you gotta do is first, you gotta turn this thing on and see how it does. Okay, ready? And you can tell, yep, the motor is on and the fan looks, it turns on by itself. You hear the noisy yep it turns on by itself so all you gotta do is just lift this thing in and let's see how this thing goes okay, where's the slide go in there. Pardon me folks, this is live video. Here. Whoa. Wow, look at this. So, here's what you can do. You lift the thing on. As you can see, you can turn this thing on. All you can see is this. By turning this thing on, here's what you can see here. Yep, there's your white screen. Uh, yep, it's where you can do is focus on your little tiny screen here, but you can go into that screen right there. See? Yep, it goes right into the screen. You can see it's very bright. And it's got a little bit of brightness here for for the most part. Yeah, look how hot and look how hot in this. This is so bright. Don't you know? I, I always love this thing bright when you turn on this projector. This is nice. After you're done, if it's too much hot, you can turn this off. And um, there you go. I don't have a slide tray for this. So all you, all you do is after you're done, you have to unplug this unit and put it back in the compartment. So, um, 
All right. So I don't have any of the any of the accessories that I have as of right now. I recently ordered off of Amazon. I just got this in addition. When I was on Amazon, I looked up and ordered the air equipped slide trays. That's for the for this unit. So I'm going to do another video sometime until I will show you a couple of videos that I would like to show you guys. Another demonstration video that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I'll catch you later. So we'll do more. I'll, so that's it for now. So I'm going to do another one a little bit later. So hold on a second and I'll come back in a few days and I'll tell you why. So, so once again, it's time to fade to black now. And we'll come back and I'll give you more of the my demonstration of my Argus 500 slide projector. In addition, I found this one in the package today, which I, a week after I first got this one off of Goodwill, probably when I first got it at Goodwill last weekend, about a week later I found this one. This is, uh, this package came from Amazon. It's handled with care, but I'm not gonna, I, I just crossed out this address so I don't want to to see it so we're gonna first we're gonna open this up and see what it do reveals okay we just cut the scissors in half so um, first you got to do is cut this stuff in well after a week of doing my job and all this stuff we're gonna just open up and see how this thing goes yep it's all paper bag and here it is this is a magazine for air-equipped automatic slide changer. See, there's you can see there's a lot of silver thing on it. See, here's that. This is the air-equipped logo, and you can see here this is for uh, also for Argus. There's actually yeah, a little had a little tear on them on the side. And there's the there's no writing on it. Bottom and yeah, you can see there's. And here you go. This is an air equipped patent. Now you can see, you cannot see that. You. This is, uh, it says air equipped, New Ro product, air equipped manufacturing company, New Rochelle, New York. It says for two by two slides. Yeah, you can't see thing like that. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to focus a little more, but yeah. Well, you can see it's right there, but there's um, there's no content on there. So you can flip the side over, but who knows. Yeah, there is actually no content written on it. So we're gonna show you what it does. Uh, let me see if you can put this in the projector see what it does and um, okay now what we're gonna do is slide in here yep it fits on any slide projector and this is what are you gonna use in addition to all of that I'm gonna see if this is going to test as well okay now it's all fit and now it's ready to show. So, by the way, in addition to what I have said, uh, let's see that this needs to flip it over. You need to turn this thing over and see what it reveals. And, uh, yeah. I was trying to get this to make sure if it's going to open or not. So this is a... I'm trying to make sure that this is... Anything is possible. Sorry for the delay, folks. Okay. I apologize for this one. Okay. And now we're ready to show. Let's see how this thing goes. Let's turn it on. Here, here's, this is this, now for a little demonstration here, but this is no slides right as of right now. I've ordered um, 
these two off of eBay. Um, I just ordered um, a two by two slide mount. This is a Kodak ready mount slide. And of course I also ordered um, another one which is a, a Scooby-Doo film strip that I am going to work on this. So I'm going to show this in a couple of days now. So I'm going to give you a little preview of this. Watch what happens. Yes! Finally slides here. And you can see you can reveal the picture or a, a film in there. So then you go to, after you finish, you go to the next one. Wow, how excellent this is looks. It works good. <laughs> it, it, it fills up to 36 slides. Yeah, it keeps, it keeps you going, but I have two or more of these extra stuff for the, uh, from out of a air equip. Yep, but it will fit on both Argus and, and uh, it, air clipped slides trays this is a slide tray i am using it right now so thank goodness wow that's interesting yep after you finish you go to the next slide and then when you go, here's what you come to the end of the slide. And here's what happens when you reach the end. You all use to take this thing out. And, um, yeah. That's pretty simple. Yep. This is a slide tray for the Argus 500 series. Fits well with with this. I hope I can try to find more of this someday. And um, this is interesting to see all this uh, stuff. And um, I hope I did not have any film slides yet. So I'm thinking about maybe in a couple of days. I will if if it comes in. I will show it to you right now. And uh, probably in the next couple of days, I'm going to give you a little bit of demonstration to how that I finally recently got it. So right now, let's put it back in the thing. And uh, there you go. So we're gonna fade to black right now and uh, once again, and we'll come back and I, in a couple of days and we'll show you what I'm going to be showing you the film strip and of course the slides that I am going to work on this since I recently picked up. So um, let's stop right here and we'll come right back and we'll do, another, we'll do more of the same, so. Stay tuned. In addition, I also received a package today off of, uh, in the mail. Um, did, uh, last week I ordered it, and of course, I found something. This is in interesting, in fact, because I don't. Uh, I would like to show you stuff that I recently acquired in the mail today. So let's see if I cut this out. All right. Uh, I'm trying to look at the back. I'm not going to show the front. I'm only the back, so I don't want to hear the name on it. So here's um, here's the PayPal receipt. Came with this. Here's your look at this. It has a an advertisement for Hanna Barbera's educational film strips. It gives it looks like a catalog of all the titles. Twenty nine by per title or something. These are advertisements for the. For all of Hanna Barbera film strips, I know those of you are familiar with uh, Hanna Barbera. It was like uh, Saturday morning cartoons we used to watch as when I was a kid. They have Flintstones, uh, Scooby Doo, The Jetsons, Jabberjaw, and there's also um, a lot of great characters from all these Hanna Barbera characters. But minus Tom and Jerry was not even on this. I, I Yogi Bear and Magilla Gorilla. I know it's a lot. Of, remember this one? Oh, and has that little edu has a booklet called Scooby Gang and Skin Deep, and yeah, it gives you a whole bunch of educational purposes. 
And um, I don't have to worry about that. And of course, these are, look at this. This is an educational product thing. That's a label. Wow, it has a, it has a label. It says Hanna-Barbera educational products. Don't have to worry about that. And it came with two cassette tapes and a film strips, two of the film strips. Look at that. These are, you can hear, as you can see, it has only one of the tapes. I think I have it here in my collection. And here's the, this is the one I have not seen it before. This is Scooby-Doo Gang and Skin Deep, What is Acne? Do you have the focus here? Yep, it says Scooby Gang and What is Acne? Has automatic this side up, reverse sides on the uh, side one. Side two is on the reverse side. There's only two different versions. One it has a tone. The second side has the audible tone. It has no tones at all. And here's and Scooby and the Gang and Skin Deep with towards clearer skin. There's side one and side two. These both of these were released from 1980. And of course a case of these are film strips. I have not seen this one before. Yep, this is the one I found today, and you can tell it has, and you can tell the film strip is here. Look at that. It has, uh, look at that. This is a very nice um, touching, you know, it's got the original tape. You have to, you have to open up and see what it looks like. And um, here's a very nice thing to open. Um, I always want... Oh, yeah, look at that. Let's see if you can start this. You Haven't you seen this one? Yep, it's got the focus and the whole thing. I You can't see that. It's too... Yeah, it's too dark to see it. And you can tell. And you can see here, it's right over here. So, that's, this, that's the one. I'm just going to work on this demonstration video here. But this is... Very nice. I always love these projector. These were film strips. I remember when I was a kid, I used to have one of those film strips. I remember back in school, I used to have one of those. We used to have my teacher. Used, I remember in school. Oh. I remember in school, we used to have this projector. This. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, Cigars International. Uh, that kind of sucks. Okay, sorry for interrupt. I apologize for the interruption here. Um, I remember in school when I was like a youngster at the time, um, when I was a kid, when I, we used to have like films, the teacher used to have film strips back when I was in like fifth grade or sixth grade or whatever. We used to have film strips. And um, there's like one film strip that I, I remember was the story of fairy tale story or whatever it is, like Snow White or whatever that is. It looks pretty interesting to see when I look what I, what appears to be very nice. So um, this is an interesting. I miss seeing these film strips, and I remember as a youngster, I had my uh, my own first film strip projector. Came with uh, originally had Cat in a Hat and uh, Are You My Mother and um, the other other stuff. These were very nice, but I surely missed it very well because. Though these film strip projectors look nice, but it's not... Well, too bad it didn't work for that much anymore. And, um, there you go. I actually showed you the video, but... I, I have not had a film strip projector, or... I have not used film strips in a very long time. So, I just wanted to decide what to do first. So, um, there were videos on YouTube regarding these film strip projectors. of what they call the Durkane. Remember the Durkane the projectors? There you go. That was the that was the, the one that I had at the time. I remember at the time when I um, had this thing. This is very nice. So I just wanted to decide what to do. But I am going to show you what the video is going to look like. So that's that. I miss film strips very much. So I hope someday I might to see if I can get more of my film strips so I can show the video of this. This is very nice. I, I'm glad um, 
these two. These are the first two film strips that I own. Yeah, I lost my film strip stuff years, years ago when I got rid of it. And uh, we had that projector for many, many years now. It's been such a very long time. So I've missed very much. So without further ado, um, I'm going to see if I can test this thing and see what it does. Okay, now it's running, but hopefully I just got the film in place. As you can tell, it says start. See, I'm trying to give you a little bit of a test here for a moment. And you can see, there it is. That's the uh, start. I try to, all you can do is set on focus. That's the, uh, you have to set it on the focus thing so, you, so that it will get a clearer film. There you, there you go. That's how you start the film or whatever it is. This is give you a little test. Uh, this came out of a film strip. You see here, it's, uh, I used a scissor to cut this thing out. I used scissors and the whole thing. But I don't have any slide bounce yet. So maybe tomorrow when it comes in, I like to how to use this to take the film strip and put it on a slide. So that um, this thing can about that so there you go I just want to let you know that this is this is this comes out very well done so now um, all you guys do is, uh, is uh, that's gonna be very that's gonna be it for, for that so tomorrow I'm gonna show you the maybe probably in the next one we're gonna show you uh, the one that I also got the next day well I'm gonna stop this for now and we'll fade to black and come back tomorrow if I'll show you more of my stuff that I got in the mail. So, stand by. And we'll come back and we'll do more of the same. Alright, before I get into basics here, um, right, which I don't have a slide mount for this one like I said yet, so maybe what's going to happen in the next few days, or probably a day or two, when the, another package will be arriving the next day. Uh, here's what I'm gonna be doing. So, as anybody remember these film strips that we had right over there, that's, uh, that you can use, to, use that for the film strips, for use on a film strip projector? Not really. So the first thing I can do is check the film. Yep, this, this was made of 35 millimeter film, if you can go to that. If you know, if you go to the slide mounts, yeah, you use the two separately. So it would have been too long or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find a way to put a slide mount on there. Here's what you can do. You need a scissor to go with it. So here's what you can do before we start. First, you can check, see if the edge of the film is right over here. I have a piece of paper for a minute here. Just hold on a second. This is what I'm going to be doing. First, I got to use a pile of paper. Um, and you can use this to trim the film. See how you can do is cut straightly right into that little light right there. And you can see, well, if it does not work, here's what you can do. is trim the, uh, the edge of the film right here. See, you can see it's right there. You have to do is just cut the edge of the film and go right over here to the starting point so that uh, it'll continue right up until when I get it so here's the here's the thing you're gonna start instead of using the focus thing all you gotta do is start it right over at the start point that's where the edge of the film is you could start right where it is Yep, that's where you could start the cut right into your, into your film. And you can go the other way around and do cut the other way around here. Before putting into slide mount. See? It's this is the start point of the film, but you can't see it's too dark to see like I mentioned. Yep, it's right here. So you can see it right over here. This uh, this thing right there is where you can see the film, where you can go insert your slide mount in 
I have I don't have transparency slides yet so I'm gonna cut into individual frames so um, I'm gonna do this right now so we'll get this uh, right away if I'm gonna be done I, I will show you the video of this so we'll have to stay tuned right now and we'll have more on that probably the next maybe by tomorrow or when I get the package here we're, we're gonna show you another one of these goodies and and if it's all set it'll be ready to run so bear with me folks and we'll come right back and aside from that I also received the package from probably today uh, from, that I just ordered off eBay last time and this is where I found I bought this thing off eBay but let me tell you uh, this is a package arrived here today and see what it does well after two after about a week and a half of Finding this one at Goodwill Here's what I opened up. So Let's see if I can fire this up and see what happens Here it is you see that? This is a Kodak Ready Mount. This has never been used. Yeah, just to focus and you see what it is. It's the front and you can see the spine. And then there's the other spine and here's the little back. The front and back and you can see it says Kodak. Made in Rochester, New York by Eastman Kodak Company. It's very nice. And you can open this up. You can see, yep, a bunch of slide mounts. These are all, it holds about a hundred slides. How about that? It uses blank slides, so you can see there's like a little sealed thing right in there. And yep, it's never been used. So now, aside from that, Let's uh, see what I, I can do the best. All right. Now, I just cut the first two slides from there. Um, uh, I got two of these films. It will go over here. But there's your, you see, it's going to fit in this slide. So you can do is open that thing up, as you can tell. All you gotta do is open up and see what it looks like. But I have to do is just put some ready mounts in here. And uh, we're, we're gonna show you guys uh, how you could set this thing up here. Oh, yeah. It doesn't, you see, it doesn't reach here. So. I'm going to do some, you have to, all you got to do is cut right over here and see what it does look like. So um, I'm going to try this thing home. So um, I'm just going to do this aside. I'll make a, a film out of this and I will put this in here and I'll show you. It'll take long enough to do so. So I'll come right back and do some more stuff and uh, I'll have to let me finish. And until after this is done, I will show you this one. So just hold on a minute. So stick around. We're going to do more on that later. Yep. Finally completed. It took me... Uh, you, yeah, this has actually had no space on this thing. So so I added a couple of spacers onto the tape. And you can see the slide mounts on there. Then you can cover the sprocket holes on there. So this is how I made a slide mount to the from a film strip to this. This is kind of like they tr the hacked this one. So this is what I did. I made a um, a film strip. It goes right into the slide, so it will project it there. So, well, I have right numbers one, two, sixty-four on there. So this is this is the best one I can try to get through. So we have to take wait for a long time to yeah, it'll take a longer to be expected. So I hope um, everything is going to be done so I can make a pattern out of this. So there you go. That's my genuine slide that goes right into this thing. So um, it, the film, the 35 millimeter film shows the screen. It can go right into there. So there you go. So now I'm going to do more of these 
So I'm going to get this thing done. And after this, I'm going to show you a demonstration of my Argus 500 slide projector. And see if this is going to test it well. We'll come right back. We're going to fade the black right now. And, and then we'll come back. I'm going to show you a demonstration of this unique projector. Well, that was actually a total loss. So um, I was uh, doing the middle of framing here when I was when I tried to put it in frame. I actually t cut this thing with the scissor, or what happened is I've just tried to trim the edge of the center, and what happened is I tried fitting it well on the one frame, and nothing. Yeah, that was a no go, a f failure. So I did my other. This well, that was my first attempt. So I decided to go back and splice it right to the first three tapes. So I decided to do this again to make it two frames. So uh, what do I do? Well, it's a good idea. I made this. Well, you can see it closely to the window. You can see focus very well. You can see it's right over Velma, where Velma sits here. See, well, this is... Yeah, you can see it's too blurry. Yes, I, I see it's a little focus here. So you could see there's two frames. You see Shaggy in the, the shopping bag and Velma's on the top. Well, that will fit well with these. But that fits very well with the slide. So why not take care of that film strip and some stuff? That would do that the only way around. Can't do this one frame at a time. Um, that will ruin this. The first three paths. I did that. It was a failure. Uh, I did this when I was young at the time. So I put this in here. So we're going to do it. Well, it fits perfectly. Everything comes in well. And it will ready to be running as soon as we can. So um, right after I'm finished, do finished doing this, I'm going to present a demonstration video. So we'll fade to black again. And we'll be back to give you a little demonstration of my Argus 500. All right, we're back. Now that the, um, the slide changer is, re is set up and it's ready to be loading in, so the slides are, are put in place and it's right in position. And I'm gonna show you uh, my, my final touches of what I would like to show you guys this. This is the start screen. Um, I'm going to show you where I'm going to start with these two sequences. Yeah, there actually there are two sequences from top to bottom. So we're going to start right at the top. And for the first, this is what we're going to show you uh, what is going on here. Yeah, we're going to start at the top. This top screen right there it says start. Yeah, you can see it's a little brighter here, but you can yeah. It is, it is kind of focused and you see that's the start screen. All you gotta do is just move the camera at the top to bottom. It goes like this. We'll start from the top when you come right to the bottom. And then you, when you go to the next slide, you can go and move the camera on the top. So, yep. Everything is set up and it's and it's finally ready to prepare, and we're gonna start this right now. Now, before we're gonna start this this uh, demo, I'm gonna show you a cassette tape that I that came with this. Yeah, I just rewind the tape and turn the other side over, and you can see this is Scooby Doo Gang and Skin Deep. What is acne? And before we're going to play this, I'm going to give a big shout out to Martin S5 1989. He was a fan of Scooby Doo. And I know if you, I used to watch Scooby Doo as a kid. I used to watch this all the time when I was on uh, when I was on on television back in those days. I used to grow up watching Scooby Doo. I still like it today. I'm not fine, but of course, I actually grew up watching these uh, the old cartoons of Scooby Doo and all that stuff. So, and just to let you know. Um, the audio, the music you're about, the uh, the tape you're about to play is actually it's about uh, Scooby Doo, a bit talking about acne or pimples. This is sort of an educational film strip. I took the film strip 
and put it on the slide and we're all ready to go. And I hope this Argus 500 is finally warmed up and it's ready to go. And we're all fired up. And we're gonna, we're gonna show this to you right now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, I'm gonna present a demo of this Argus 500 slide projector. So all you gotta do is just after you go to the next one after you're done, you're gonna go to the next one, and you can see the focus is right down in the below center. Yep, it says start sound on next frame. Okay, it says here, that's Scooby. He says look sharp. Okay, folks, get ready. It's time to watch Scooby Doo Gang in Skin Deep. What? is epic. I hope you enjoy it. Marble. 
You're gonna keep it up, right? Huh? Huh? Oh, <laughs> well, I will as long as you feel ashamed and try to cover up your problem. You too, Sonny. Okay, okay, let's get on with the lesson. The skin is the largest of all your organs. If you weigh 150 pounds, your skin weighs about 6 pounds. It has an area of about 17 to 20 square feet. Beneath the surface is a dense network of nerves, blood vessels, hairs, glands, muscles, and other structures. Gee, I thought my skin was just a thin layer over my muscles. What muscles? I thought you were supposed to be man's best friend. <laughs> well, the skin is actually three layers. Look at this model. The outer layer is called the epidermis. The middle, thicker section, is the dermis. The innermost one is called the subcutaneous layer. Good boy, like a three-layer cake. <laughs> there you go with food again. The epidermis is basically for protection or covering. The thickness of this layer varies greatly. For example, it's very thick on the soles of the feet and very thin on the backs of the hands. Layers of microscopic cells from the epidermis are constantly being lost. This is caused by bathing or simply rubbing against clothing. These cells are replaced by new cells from underneath. Gosh, I didn't know a person kept getting new skin. Sort of. The dermis is the most complex of the three layers. Just one square inch of this layer can contain hundreds of nerve endings, sweat glands, oil glands, and possibly muscles and hairs. Microscopically, thin blood vessels called capillaries are located in the dermis also. Blood transfers oxygen and nutrients to the skin and carries away waste. Hey, that's a good system. Glad you like it. The subcutaneous layer is loosely attached to the body's inner structures, such as the larger muscles. Fatty tissues in this layer insulate your body against hot and cold temperatures. The fat also cushions the inner organs against jolts. As people grow older, the fatty tissue is absorbed by the muscles. This causes the outer skin layers to form uneven folds or wrinkles. You never see a wrinkled old dog. Yeah, especially a sheep dog. <laughs> <laughs> Velma, how does acne fit into what you've told us about the skin? Yeah, sure, see. Remember I said this outer skin layer called the epidermis was the protective layer? We remember. Well, the cells on top toughen and form the protective coating. These toughened cells are sometimes called the horny layer. Oh boy, now you're telling me I look like a horned toad. <laughs> <laughs> boy, you are sensitive. As your skin grows, the cells in the horny layer die and shed. The shedding usually takes place slowly. After a sunburn, however, it occurs rapidly, and you can see the peeling. Oh, yeah. With acne, the horny layer grows more quickly than it shed. Cell upon cell is piled up. And that's what causes acne? Well, not that alone. The real problem starts down in the dermis. That's where the oil glands, or sebaceous glands, as they're called, are located. These glands can become too active and produce an overabundance of a fatty, oily material called sebum. This sebum travels up through the gland's canal. It then flows out the skin's opening, called the pore, onto the surface of the skin. So what's the problem? As the sebum nears the pore, it changes because of its contact with the air. The sebum can become thicker and darken in color. If the passageway becomes blocked with the sebum, the first step of acne, blackheads, may develop. Do you mean blackheads are not black from dirt? That's right. They're black because of the contact with oxygen in the air. Well, what do blackheads have to do with acne? Uh, you know, pimples. Yeah. If the blackheads are not removed, the sebum keeps filling the passageway, but it can't get out. Pressure builds and bacteria can enter the area. Then infection sets in and causes a red, swollen look. Now the blackhead has turned into a pimple. Hmm. You know, I'm beginning to understand. 
Well, Velma, you've given me a pretty clear picture of the skin, but I still don't know how to keep my skin clear. <laughs> Very clever, Shaggy. But you're going to have to wait a bit until I run some errands. Meanwhile, why don't you take off the sack? Uh-uh. It's staying put. Uh, say, Scoob, let's go grab some lunch. I'm starved. Yeah, let's go put on the old feed bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Well, how do you like that? Well, that ends the, um, the film. Now you got, the, actually, that ends the slide. So after you finish, what you gotta do is take it out, put it back where it is, and then, then put it back where it goes and, and we're waiting for the next show. Well, how do you like that? Well, that was Scooby, the Scooby-Doo gang and Skin Deep. What is acne? Well, as, watch, as I watched this, actually, when I was watching this, well, look, yeah, Shaggy was wearing a bag on his head. <laughs> that was so funny, and I know it's hilariously funny. You know, the characters in this, uh, in this, in this uh, tape that featured, yeah, they had, they brought some original voice acting to the, uh, to this, to this educational film strip, you know, as you probably know, uh, Velma, you know, played by the voice of some, uh, voice actress, you know, Velma was played by, uh, I don't know, he, they, you know, Hanna-Barbera did produce a film strip, a, a, some educational film strip based on cartoon show that was based on, you know, Scooby-Doo and the whole thing. I know there was uh, so many voice talents appeared in this episode. In this episode, uh, you know, this is our yeah. You know, Velma was the character who played by. I, I'm not sure the voice who was in this in this uh, in in uh, yeah it was. I think it was actually who voiced this chef. I don't know who's the voice actress in uh, in in uh, as Velma. If you cannot believe the animated uh, show, you know, it's based on the animated cartoon show, you know, it's voice talents of, well, it featured the cast. I have not know know the cast is, 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 you know, was played in there. It was, yeah. I thought the, the original source material. I, I can't, I can't describe the name. It was, uh, Yes, Nicole Jaffe, who is also voiced as, uh, as uh, Velma, and then Don Messick, who is also voiced as Scooby, and, of course, Casey Kasem, the late, great Casey Kasem, who is, does the voice of Shaggy in, Sco in all of the cartoon shows, in all of the series. You know, Casey Kasem, back when he was doing American Top 40. I remember, I used to listen to that show every weekend when he was counting down the 40 biggest hits. In, in the U.S., according to Billboard magazine, and counting down to where Casey Kasem counts down the 40 biggest songs ever. Well, like they counting down from 40 num from number 40 all the way to number one. And yeah, that show was a big instant success. It was pretty good after 39 years of hosting a show like this. But sadly, he passed away last year. Um, he was a uh, was a tragic loss. Now I, I remember. Li remember listening to Casey Kasem all the time. And yeah, the music you hear on this tape was actually done by the Hoyt, Hoyt Carton, who's also her, Hoyt Carton, who also does the music for all of Hanna-Barbera cartoon series back in the 70s and 80s after he took over from Ted Nichols. Yeah, that was right. And he was, uh, he was the music director for all of the educational film strips. Like the one you hear, it's from... Uh, yeah, this music you hear, it's kind of like it was used under... It's kind of like they came out of a Saturday morning cartoon show, and there you go. I, I always enjoyed that. It's it's about acne. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about a pimple and how he popped it up and all that stuff. I remember when I was like when I was in my teens, I had pimples. I had blackheads and all that stuff. My brother used to pop my pimple in my face and uh, 
cause an infection. That would happen when I was like a young kid at the time. I had chicken pox. <laughs> yeah, because all these dark red spots and all that stuff, there was like infected disease and all these things like this. I had, I had, I had pimples when I was like, I had all my pimples in my face that are in there. Jeez, that was all dirty and it actually cleans my face. You have to use it. Yeah, I was like teenagers at the time when I remember that, remember those. It's very, very sad to say about it. Well, but now I'm very clean and everything is fine. All right, enough said. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, how do you like that? Well, this, this, how do you like this light projector? Well, it looks pretty good. I always enjoyed them very well. This is the first time I ever to screen this film strip shown on an Argus 500 projector made in the 1960s. And I hope you all enjoy, as we, as we say, I will have more film strips coming up in the near future. And uh, you can tell that Argus 500, uh, as you probably know, um, if you look at the name, if you see here, yeah, Argus, the name in uh, side projectors, and it was also the first company that made 35 millimeter camera. If you know the name Argus, the company started in the 30s. You know, Kodak uh, was in, was the was the uh, forerunner of the. Uh, you know, Argus is actually the camera company that first started. It began in uh, what year is this from? Yeah, that's, that's the. Got to no, I don't know the history of uh, of Argus. That's, as you probably know, the camera company. The company was uh, founded in 1936 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was originally was a subsidiary of. It was a division. Originally was originated as a division of International Radio Corporation (IRC). It was founded by a guy named Charles Verstor, best known product as was the C3 rangefinder camera which enjoyed a 27 year production and became one of the top selling cameras in history. And it's also Model A, it, it was also the very first, and it was also the company that made the first ever 35 millimeter camera, which was a, a portable camera that was actually was first hit the scene. And then it was a Model A. And then and in 1959, Argus acquired, the, Argus was acquired by Sylvania was best known for television, light bulbs, and radios, and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, and it, and it kept it on for 10 years until 1969. Yep, it had ceased camera production. Some rebatch cameras continued to be sold under Argus for the 70s and the whole thing. Yeah, but the company exists until, I don't know, it's, um, I don't know, I don't have anything to say about slide projectors. And yes, the first, uh, the first of its kind, I think, was First, the first ever 35 millimeter camera was first introduced, but yeah, Argus was kept using the 35 millimeter camera for its time, and this was before Kodak. Other competition between these two other rivals, Kodak was the first, the first company to have cameras, and yeah, the first company in film, the first name in cameras, what they called the Brownie camera, and of course, in the in the early 60s, Kodak introduced the when Kodak introduced to the Instamatic camera. They try to compete with Argus, which you, as you probably know, Argus has been the name for portable, disposable, was it's a portable camera, which is where you can put it in your pocket. And that's why it was what they call the first ever 35 millimeter camera when it first came out. Kodak took a, took a, uh, took a big jump, took a big leap at Argus when they try to compete with Argus. Well, Two companies who had, and became more competition between Kodak and Bell and Howell and this. So one of the three great camera makers that put, first put out in the, on the scene. So until the company still names remains today, I'm not sure if the Argus name exists. Or not, I'm not sure. And uh, once again, here's your. This is your off on, and that's just what you can tell. And um, okay, this is this is your off and on switch, but yep, it says Ann Arbor, Michigan, division of Sylvania Electric Products. 
And then you're, there's your switch. All you do, all you gotta do is after you've done, and after you after you finished, you have to unplug this off the outlet. You know, uh, yeah, I know it's it's very heavy. It's, yeah, it's kind of a pain to take it out. Yep, you should unplug it, and uh, and and then rub it with your rubber bands. So I got to do is cover with rubber bands. And uh, put it uh, put it this way right there. And um, that's what you can do. Put it in a, in a little case right there. Where it says here, put it right where it is. Yep, you can do snap into two latches, and uh, you're good to go. Well, how do you like that? So, tell us what you think about the Argus 500. Well, it looks pretty good. It's better than the Kona carousels, which you can tell the carousels is kind of a malfunction due to the malfunctioning problems when it first came out in the early 60s when the Kodak was first came out with the carousel. You know, the round-looking slide projector with the little round things. This way you can get, holds up to 80 slides. This one, by the way, holds to 36 slides. When Kodak first came out with the, uh, with the cavalcade slide projectors, they, they tried to compete with Argus, which I think Argus made it a, a more convenient slide projectors, but when it was like easy to use, you have to automatically switch using with the remote control. There is also a version with the uh, with the uh, the automatic slides. You have to you have to switch it. You have to press the button to go to the next to advance to the next ones and the next one and the next one. Yeah, but this one you have to change it handily so you can go to the next slide. There you go, and I hope you all enjoyed that as well. And that is it. I'm sorry I had to say I've been ma making this video for the last two weeks. I started making this video since uh, August the 2nd. Back on August the 2nd when I first bought this at Goodwill. And I also ordered uh, a couple of other things that I got probably around that time when I got the air equipped. The ones I bought off of Amazon, the, the film strips that I two film strips of Scooby-Doo that I bought off of eBay, and of course, the one I have today is the, I am in with the slide mounts. I actually got it off of eBay. So there you go. A look at a demonstration of Argus 500. So I hope you all enjoy it. And thank you for watching, and I hope you all enjoy it as well. Sorry, it's been about two weeks since I had to start doing this. I'm going to... I have to transfer it, upload it onto YouTube, and see what's going on. Uh, until then, this is good. Then we'll have to see if I can finally upload it as well. So I'm recording this on Friday, and as you probably know, I'm still making this video on Friday, August the 14th, 2015. Uh, my previous video that I did upload, uh, that I recorded it, it was since it was on uh, August the 12th. That was August 12th when I first got that film strip as well, and then there you go. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you're very happy with it. So I have another film strip to go, so I have to do this. I, got, I ordered a, another magazine thing, it's the same thing that I, and, and the, the actual one. And so I'm going to show another video of the demonstration of that projector sometime soon. And maybe we're going to show it to you guys out there. So, I hope you all enjoy it as well. So, thank you for watching. Once again, I don't have anything to say about it. It's Chris, and I will, I, I will see you later. Take care, and bye for now.